Dojo, we move on to our next challenge titled Object Oriented Piracy. Ahoy, matey. You are a leader of a small pirate crew, and you have a plan with the help of OOP, which is Object Oriented Programming. You wish to make a pretty efficient system to identify ships with a heavy booty on board. They're talking about treasure there, so calm down. Unfortunately for you, people weigh a lot these days. So how do you know if a ship is full of gold and not people? You will begin with writing a generic ship class. And you can probably see in the solution box that this was provided for us. It's a very simple class with two member fields here. It's got a draft and a crew and a constructor that initializes those values. Pretty much as simple as you get in terms of classes and objects. Every time your spies see a new ship enter the dock, they will create a new ship object based on their observations. Draft represents an estimate of the ship's weight based on how low it is in the water. And the crew is a count of the crew members on board. So here's this. an example, ship Titanic equals new ship. 15 and 10. Those certainly aren't um, realistic numbers, but it's just an example. Taking into account that an average crew member on board adds 1.5 units to the draft, a ship that has a draft of more than 20 without crew is considered worthy to loot. Any ship weighing that much must have a lot of booty. Add the method is worth it to decide if the ship is worthy to loot. For example, the Titanic was deemed um, to not be worth looting. There wasn't enough loot with respect to crew members. So if it's crew member heavy, not a lot of treasure, they say it's not worth your time. So I didn't quite like the description here. I was a little confused when I first looked at this, um, this paragraph in particular. You know, it said a ship that has a draft of more than 20 without crew. Um, you know, kind of read weird to me, like they mean there's supposed to be zero crew members on there. And uh, that's not what they mean. It just means, uh, you know, factor out the crew's weight. And if you're left with 20 or more, then that's considered a good target. So in case you were confused by that description like I was, that's what that means. So they left a comment for us telling us where to place our code. Um, this is a fine spot for it. We'll go there. And we are going to have to make a method. In case you haven't did that before, if you haven't done that before, excuse me, we will describe the structure of methods. A method in an object or a class like this is a behavior that the object will have. When you create objects from the class, and your methods define the behaviors, the actions that your objects can take. And then contrast that with these member fields that are just simple data, right? You have a draft and a crew. This is data about the object, about the state of the object. They're not actions, they tell you properties of the object. So we are going to make a method. And to do that, you don't have to specify an access modifier, that's what these are called. Um, I like to do that always explicitly. I just think it gives a nice uniform look to the class. But if you happen to omit it, it will default to private. Know that there are three types. Public, which means that people who use your class can access it. There is protected, which means that classes that inherit from your class can access the method. We'll get into inheritance later. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. And then finally, the third type is private, which means that the method can only be called within the class itself. It's behavior that's not meant for outsiders to use. It's sort of like how you do the work of your class behind the scenes. You don't want to make the users of your class have to know all the little details because then it's harder to use your class, right? You want to keep the public interface small and as simple as possible then people don't know they don't need to know how you calculate stuff and th that makes their work a lot quicker simpler and then of course you'll be on that side of the coin too where 
when you're working with classes of other people you just you have a lot of work to do you don't want you don't need to know all their details about how they do some obscure calculations you just need to to move on and and use the object at a high level and so that's sort of the idea with that i'm assuming for their tests you know they're going to need to access this method so i am making mine public you can optionally have a static keyword next we don't need that here um, we'll go over static as it comes up in later challenges so I'll just omit that for now but you've probably seen that before so I wanted to address it here then you're going to have a return type and you'll notice for our method um, it's returning true or false right which we know to be the boolean type so that's a bool returns a bool they gave us the method name here, right? Is worth it. It's camel cased. That's a common way to name methods where you capitalize the first letter of each word. That helps for reading. If you don't believe me, you know, try it sometime. It's all the same. It's worth it. You know what I mean? That you can imagine if you stumble upon this without knowing the problem, it's 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 painful on your eyes when you look at a bunch of these, so don't be that guy, don't be that gal. It's worth it. So you got your method name. Then you use these parentheses to specify parameters. In our case, we don't have any parameters, so we'll just leave that blank. Then you use curly braces to define the scope of your method. Everything between these curly braces is code that is part of your method that will be called. So, finally, on to the problem at hand. How do we return the correct result? Well, what information do we have? We have a draft, which is an idea of the total weight of the boat, and then we have the number of crew members on board. They also provided us, it's not mentioned in this class, but you could certainly make a constant for that, that um, each crew member on average is 1.5 units so um, you could even do that right you could say public we, we don't need this to be public actually so we'll make a private private static float um, crew member let's call it crew member weight equals 1.5 F you can use a capital F if you to I F if you want to I just use lowercase and so this sets it up um, then we don't have to use a magic number in our calculation that's when you sort of just start dropping number values and calculations and when you get a lot of them it's like well why did the person use 1.5 you know what I mean if you're if you were working on this code you inherited it and you're just wondering okay how are you it's not clear that 1.5 is a person's weight is an average crew member weight at least not to me so when you give these meaningful names to it it's a lot easier to get the gist of what's going on very quickly so we'll do that I made it private because we're just going to access it in our method no one else needs to know about it so keep it private it's one less thing that we have to burden users of our class with so we have to have more than 20 left over right after we factor out the cruise weight so what do we have to start the total weight is the draft right so let's say i'm going to return this we're going to do it in one line we're going to say the draft which represents a weight minus let's and let's subtract the weight of the crew right and whatever's left over is potential booty so we'll say crew times crew member weight. I probably would have named crew num number of crew members instead of crew. Not a great name. I wouldn't have used draft either, but maybe this is uh, some English bloke made this challenge. I don't know. But anyway, here we are. So we have the, tr the total weight. We're going to factor out uh, the total weight of all crew members by taking the number of them and multiplying by the average weight. Subtract that from 
the draft, the total weight, and whatever's left over is non-human weight. And we want to make sure that's greater than 20, right? That's what they told us. If it's more than 20, um, it's worth attacking. And look, here we go again, right? I was talking about magic numbers. Here's one. Like, if you just came upon this code, would you? I'm thinking, well, why 20? What does 20 mean? So why not just go uh, private static? You could use an int here. Um, say weight worth wondering. Something like that, right? And now instead of these weird number values, you know, you could put the 1.5 in where I put crew member weight in. Use that in the 20 and it's just not that clear so this reads a little better right I would have used total weight minus number of crew members times the average weight um, crew member yeah I could call it crew member average weight you don't need to get crazy long with your name it's just something that gets you on the right track and so this reads better than just numbers and wondering about what numbers mean so and this also is beneficial too if you reference these values in other methods in your um, class, then you don't have to keep typing 20 or 1.5 where you introduce the possibility of making a typing error. Maybe you accidentally put in 1.4 in one place and all of a sudden your program doesn't quite work right. You know, So that's another benefit of this. But yeah, I think we about have it right here. Um, yeah, that's really, that should do it. Don't need the comment there. We can try the test first. You can see their sample tests down here. We passed the sample tests, sample test. And then I'll go ahead and head on to the larger collection. And that looks good too. So you may be left with one question wondering, um, hey, what's this bit here about how does it know to do operations in the right order? Why didn't it do draft minus crew first, going from left to right, and then multiply by the that value by the weight, and then check if that's um, in excess of the plundering threshold? And this comes down to the order of operations like they have when you learned math in math class. Some operations take higher precedence. Multiplication comes before addition and subtraction. So when you make a statement like this, um, the multiplication is actually going to fire off first. It's going to do this first, and it's going to take draft minus that answer, and then it's going to do the comparison of the whole thing. And you're not expected to know that. Again, go to the Microsoft Docs, look up order of operations, C sharp, something like that. It'll land you here. And you can see the precedence and associativity, C operators um, should be the same or very similar. But anyway, on our point of look at multiplicative comes above additive, right? and additive came above the relational ones. So that's how I know which order they're going to be. In, if you weren't sure and couldn't access it, or you're just really paranoid, you can always use parentheses to force operations. Or if you wanna, you know, do something in violation of the natural order of operations, you can use parentheses to overrule. And do something like this you know then you could put another set around these and you could put another set around the whole thing if you wanted the nice thing about working in an IDE and not just coding in your browser like we're doing is that it's going to um, a good one is going to highlight and show you which parentheses are unnecessary they'll be kind of grayed out not the white that they are now and then you know that you don't actually need them they're not changing the order of operations in any way. But 
that's a way to get around that if you're in a situation say where you wanted hey I actually want draft minus crew to happen first you know you can force it like that so uh, yeah I think that's about the only other thing with this challenge again we'll get to the static keyword in this case I like uh, I'll give you a really quick intro to it I like to think of static as signaling to turn off object-oriented programming and by that I mean normally when you would make an object a ship object it's going to have a draft value and a crew value for every object that you make and they're independent of each other so you can make one ship with very large values you can make another ship with very small values when I say static here that means that this this variable this member right here there's not a separate copy created for every ship there's one value and it applies to all ships that's why I kind of say like OOP is off you know what I mean I, th I think of it like turning it off so hopefully that simplifies that to you I'm sure it'll come up a lot more as we go through these challenges but that's why I did it here I didn't need I don't need separate crew member weights for every ship right I'm using that 1.5 value they gave us um, always it doesn't change per ship if it did change per ship then yeah get rid of the static and make it a member variable so um, yeah and I probably could have made these as constant values too because I had no intention of changing them we'll get to that as well there's also a read only option similar but yeah otherwise hit me up with questions and I'm going to submit this one we'll see imagine people did stuff pretty similar wasn't a lot going on here cool yeah see they were doing it without you didn't have to make the variables that I did the constant kind of thing but I just think it reads better like if I just look at this code I, I don't know what they they mean it's not very expressive so do what you like uh, just a recommendation okay thanks again for watching see you in the next video